Welcome to TechZine TV. Welcome to a new episode of TechZine TV. Welcome, Gabe. Um, your SVP GM at Workday. You're responsible for the whole platform. I uh, I learned. That's right. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting job. It's the infrastructure side of the platform. Our core software components that power kind of the horizontal layer across Workday and our centralized application engineering uh, functions that you know deliver value across all of Workday. So it's a you know the t core technology uh, platform behind Workday. Yeah, you're currently in Barcelona, I believe, for your uh, European event. Um, you're announcing a lot of things today, and that was the reason I reached out because I wanted to ask you a couple of questions because I saw some acquisitions coming along and some announcements, and I thought, hey, this is something we need to we need we need, we need to yeah jump on. Um, the biggest ac acquisition you did uh, this year was Sana, but now you announced another acquisition called Pipe Dream, which is an uh, iPass platform, a competitor to EFTT, Zapier, Make an API automation gateway, uh, basically. I, I do think it's a bit smarter. I see a lot of AI on their site, so uh, uh, that's interesting. Um, I, I understand you need a platform like that for Workday because yeah, I spoke with your CTO, Peter Bayless, uh, in August during Workday Rising US. Um, he has a very ambitious strategy, to say the least. He wants to compete with all the bigger platforms out there and, and he needs to expand what work they can do. And, and I can imagine having an iPaaS platform within your portfolio will help you connect to more third parties in a faster way. Um, but I also see that uh, PipeDream has built a really nice relationship with many startups and, and, and te technology companies that are currently building all kinds of uh, uh, interesting AI applications but they rely on Pipe Dream to do the last mile. So if they want to, I don't know, do some AI magic and send it to Slack or do some AI magic and put it in your Google Calendar, um, Pipe Dream makes that happen for them. And I can imagine most of these startups are now thinking, hey, work they just bought Pipe Dream. What does that mean for us? I don't know if you're already ready to comment on that, if they should be worried or not. Well, you know, uh, for, first, you know, great to be here and, you know, chatting through this. And, you know, I think you're right to mention that, you know, we've had some really interesting announcements here. So I'm excited about that. Um, you know, one thing to remember is you know, we've signed a definitive agreement, uh, to, uh, but we are not closed on the acquisition. And so, you know, I, there's limits to what I can speak to in terms of what the plans are. Uh, yeah. And then furthermore, you know, my belief here is that any plans are going to need to be built in conjunction with, you know, the, the, the team that's coming on board, Todd, in this case. Who's the CEO of PyDream? Who um, he and I have been working very closely throughout this entire process, uh, as you can imagine. Um, the thing I will say is part of what made PyDream interesting is actually the traction that you're referring to in the ecosystem, right? The fact that it's getting used. The, you know, it's not just 3,000 connectors. I mean, of course, no. that is interesting. It's 3,000 connectors that are getting active usage from many, many folks, right? And so we have a lot of interest in making sure that that base of connectors continues to get used, continues to have quality, and, and continues to be exercised by folks in the ecosystem. And that's going to be driving a lot of our decision-making as we roll forward together. So it's not going to be an internal tool for Workday. It, it, it's going to be a product that's still available for all the startups and all the companies out there that are currently a customer of PipeDream. Yeah, we, we are most interested in, in leveraging PipeDream as a library and as a component in our overarching AI strategy, right? The ability to take enterprise insights that we're getting through Workday and then act on those insights through connectors in, in a pipe dream context provides a lot of power and value, right? And as I said, you know, it's really important that we're able to sort of continue uh, realizing that value from the base of connectors through those connectors being continually utilized by the ecosystem. One other thing that I would point out that is uh, notable, are you familiar with our acquisition of pipe, uh, sorry, of uh, Flowwise? Yes. Yeah. So, so the Flowwise 
Agent Builder is another interesting example of a you know similar uh, project to Pipe Dream in that it is an open source project available on GitHub. It has many mm -hmm. users. I, mean, I think you know, for for the uh, Flowwise project, they have something like forty six thousand GitHub stars. Are very very popular on the ecosystem, and you know that's something that you know, again is is we are looking to continue the momentum and the interest in that open uh, source ecosystem because we think that gives us value in Workday. Right. In other words, the ecosystem system and Workday's interests are aligned. And we want to make sure that that continues to uh, be the case. And I would imagine that's going to be the case for Pipe Dream as well. Okay. And, and you're also willing to invest in Pipe Dream and to maybe build it out even more? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're, we're interested in acquiring the company to invest uh, further in that direction, of course. What shape that investment takes, you know, we're going to have to make those decisions after we close the transaction and are, you know, uh, able to sort of, uh, we're allowed to make those decisions. So stay tuned for that. But uh, as I said, I could speak for kind of my interest here, which is I want to make sure that Workday's interests remain aligned with the ecosystem's interests, as well as the open source community's interests. I think all of those things coming together are what are going to make this some of the parts uh you know even better did you announce an expectation when you think you can close this acquisition I'm not prepared to comment on that yet. I think so okay. into the details. You know, my hope is is it won't take you know overly long. Um, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it is a smaller company, and so that that allows us uh, you know some some flexibility. But it's difficult to comment precisely. Why well, it shouldn't take years? Let's 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 say that. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the problems you had, at least uh, where Peter didn't have a real answer on August, was how you can manage agents over multiple platforms. Because you were talking about managing agents from an HR perspective, like an employee, but you can only do that on your own platform. He said, yeah, we don't still have a kind of protocol to manage agents across multiple platforms. We've seen some new acquisitions from your competitors, from Salesforce, for example, who said, oh, we take MuleSoft and we take the whole iPath approach and put that in the middle. And then we can manage and govern every agent because we become the man in the middle. Is that something you could do with Pipe Dream as well? It, it's certainly a possibility. That said, my focus at the moment is on making sure that we're solving for workday specific use cases. Let me give you an example of what I'm trying to enable with mm -hmm. this. Today, we have many users on Workday who are looking to write a performance review for their employees. And as part of that, they need to go gather feedback from their teammates in their company. Today, you know, you'd have to search through the org chart and figure out which teammates you'd want to select for feedback. What if instead you can actually write an agent that would understand you know, how to go out to Jira or Notion or Asana and be able to pull who this individual has been working with on their most recent project and then route the feedback request to those individuals, right? What is the result of that? Well, it's going to be higher response rates because people who worked on someone recently on a project are more likely to respond and the feedback quality is going to be a lot higher. Right. So that is really the kind of scenario that we're interested in solving. Personally, for me, I'm less interested in figuring out how we better position as like a control plane for agents. You know, I think if we do a good job solving specific use cases for customers in the realm of HR and finance, I think the rest is going to come. OK. Um, do you also aim to make this available for more people? Because you also announced Workday Go, a, a kind of an, uh, a small to medium business plan for Workday potential customers. Because I read some press releases that say that yeah, the, most of the companies in the world are small to medium <laughs> and not large. And Workday is now more or less an enterprise player. Um, you want to go after the small to medium as well. Um, do you want to bring all your AI capabilities to them as well? Uh, absolutely. And, you know, I'm not an expert in our uh, Workday Go products, you know, so you have to talk with Max or some other folks if you want a more detailed answer. But what I can say is, you know, we're making big moves in this space. And also, we have been making progress in the medium enterprise segment for some time now. So this is really a doubling down in that direction. And, and you know, what we announced today were partnerships on the payroll front that are going to make this even easier and more compelling for Workday uh, for folks in the, the medium enterprise market who are interested in a really, truly robust enterprise grade solution that can also be applied in a smaller company uh, setting. 
Yeah, but you are familiar with your strategy to 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 expand the company and to go after uh, a bigger market share all across the platform industry, right? That's right. I think there's a ton of opportunity inside of the medium enterprise market, inside of the international market more broadly, and that will complement Workday's leading position, you know, as you know, amongst the large enterprise segment. Okay. Um, because I do see some similarities that you're closely watching your competitors, what they are doing, and you're copying some of their things, which isn't bad because when it works, it works, and 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 it's better to to copy something good than build something bad. Um, but I think you're also looking at getting some competition back. You're now partnering with most of these guys in the in the enterprise field, but you're also now trying to compete with them. I I, I already. I uh, see it's, it's becoming very obvious that, that Salesforce will introduce a competitor to work there in the next year or so with a complete HM solution. They already built the HR top layer, so yeah, it's kind of easy for them to put it under the ground as well. Um, how do you look at that, getting more competition in your, in your, in your own field? I think there's lots of competition in the space and I expect the competition to heat up. And by the way, heat up from a lot of different directions, right? Not just folks in enterprise SaaS, but also startups, uh, you, you have agentic AI companies, et cetera. And, and so we take you know, that as a you know reality of the current environment, mm -hmm. but I'm focused on customers. I'm focused on making sure that we are able to deliver best in class experiences, products, solutions, packages, capabilities that best tackle our market. I don't like to, stay overly focused on what competitors are doing. It's good to be aware of that, but making sure that mm -hmm. we're innovating and increasing, ever increasing the pace of innovation. As you mentioned, you know, Peter and I are very aligned on increasing yeah. the speed of output. And I think hopefully you're seeing that with our rising announcements. That's very noticeable, yeah. Yes, very noticeable, right? And, and I'm glad that, I'm glad to see that, right? And certainly the acquisitions that we're doing are noticeable in terms of velocity. What is maybe less noticeable at this point is the speed up in terms of our internal development, our organic development uh, rate of improvement. Lots of advances in our use of agentic AI internally that are going to accelerate what we are building. And so I think what customers can expect is a brand new work day, literally, uh, but also figuratively, uh, you know, in terms of our ability to to ship, uh, which much with much much greater velocity and you know a much bigger impact on the market okay yeah i think it's hard to comment on but you're acquiring a lot of companies are you done or do you think there's more to come hard to ever say we're done <laughs> um you know you're right that we've made a, a lot of moves in this space and you know, i'm eager to make sure we're following through on those promises for customers but as i said we're also accelerating our internal pace of development so you can expect to see a lot of uh, organic innovation to complement the inorganic but what you usually see at other companies is that they buy another big vendor and try to integrate it you're buying very precise uh, kind of startups because Sana was a startup, and and, and uh, um, the one the other one you mentioned, the AI agent builder was a, the Flowwise was a, was a startup. Uh, I don't know if PyBuilder was still a startup or was a bit bit bigger, but you're buying very specific companies. You you you're really. That, that, that's that's right, and 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 I'll tell you in my conversations with customers, I had many of them here at Rising Amia. Many have told me that they see very clearly the rationale of Sana and Flowwise and Pipedream and Paradox and Hired Score, right? And and the, mm -hmm. all inside of the portfolio, and and they are very complementary of the vision of, of what those acquired products can bring to the overall workday market. Now, of course, the onus is going to be on us to execute and make sure that we're able to deliver the value and bring those products together, integrate them properly, which is going to mean different things in different cases. But I'm very optimistic that we are going to continue to do a great job in that direction. And as I said, supplement that inorganic with organic innovation out of our core engineering functions. Now, we already talked about you moving a bit faster than you used to. Uh, um, what's the objective to integrate us all and bring it to market? Uh, the objective is to do it as fast as possible. <laughs> and so <laughs> we are we are moving quickly with speed. But you know, as you mentioned, th these products snap together and these experiences snap together in a way that is fairly 
pretty obvious, both to customers, but also to our internal teams and to the acquired companies. And so the hope here is that the fact that these, these pieces were very carefully selected is going to allow us organizationally and, and as well as in a market context, bring all of these products together to market in a way that's going to make sense and in a way that's going to demonstrate very, very uh, fast pace of innovation. I see you made uh, one other announcement uh, this week about uh, the sovereign cloud availability. Is there something you want to add on that? Yes, the EU sovereign cloud is a big component to you know, what we have been announcing at Rising in EMEA. And uh, as I'm sure you can appreciate, you know, sitting on uh, EU soil, this is an environment where you know, regulations around things like AI are taken very seriously, right? And, and rightly so. Yeah. And so we want to make sure that we're able to provide hosting infrastructure that is matched to the compliance and regulatory environments where, in which we operate. And that is a different environment here in the EU. And so we are enabling a host hosting solution that is going to guarantee data that is put into this environment stays in the EU, stays on EU sovereign soil, and is mapped to the regulatory and compliance needs that, that you know, are, are required for that. The feedback from customers has been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, many look at this as, frankly, a deal breaker for deploying enterprise-grade uh, AI, and they are thankful that Workday is offering a solution like this. And what I've heard is I believe it's going to accelerate the pace of Workday adoption because of this new solution with the EU Sovereign Cloud. Yeah, the only question I had was why did you choose AWS Sovereign Cloud? Because there were some discussions or debates going on if that's a real Sovereign Cloud because they set up an entity in Europe, but it's still owned by Amazon in the US. So it doesn't fully cut the ties between the US lawmakers. Uh, and we see other cloud providers uh, looking for European partners to run the data center and run the services to take it, to make it a bit more separate. But yeah, that, that, like I said, there's all discussion going on. What is sovereign and what isn't? They probably had the same discussions internally. So maybe you can comment. A couple of things I'll say. First, look, the landscape around you know, sovereignty and, and governance and AI regulations, it's constantly changing. Yeah. So we have a big challenge to just make sure that we're following this, we're keeping up with this and making sure that our products adapt to this. With regard to the EU Sovereign Cloud specifically, I will say we are very confident that it's going to meet the needs of a large number of customers. We've heard that feedback already. Uh, we're working very closely with AWS on this, and I have every confidence this is going to meet the needs of the customers that I was speaking to at the event today. Uh, uh, as well as many others in the European market. Okay. Um, and do you expect to sign up a lot of new customers with your sovereign cloud? Or do you expect a number of customers you already have to move to the sovereign that's a, that's a good question. My, my expectation is going to be a little bit of both. I think there are large customers that are big workday customers today who have a need for a sovereign environment. I also think this will frankly unlock the ability for more highly regulated industries and sectors of the economy to actually deploy workday in ways that were not possible before because we could not provide that guarantee of data locality, residency, et cetera. Okay. I want to thank you, uh, Gabe, for commenting on uh, my questions uh, during uh, your event in Barcelona. I wish you a great event, and uh, I hope to talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Thank you for watching TechSign TV, and we'll be back with more. Thank you for watching TechScene TV, the channel about enterprise technology that brings you IT insights and analyses from events all around the globe. We cover everything, everywhere. Visit techscene.eu for more written in-depth articles and analysis, or keep watching techscene.tv. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels and share your favorite videos with your colleagues. We'll see you soon.